I still get uh, asked a ton of questions, guys, on how you go about uh, investing in the stock market. And if you just go back and watch a lot of my catalog of videos, I, I certainly talk a lot about where you can start, the type of account that you start, which account you start first. And then once you get that account, you know the importance of identifying your, your funding source, you know, whether that be through your income, maybe you make a, a good income, uh, maybe you've got to rub a few pennies together, right, to make ends meet and identifying within your own budgets, you know, what type of income that you could put aside to put into the stock market. And then I, I feel like I get a lot of people right up to the edge of feeling comfortable with deploying into the stock market and they, they still, you know, are scratching their head and they're hitting me up on, you know, what it is that they do. And I certainly don't mind those questions, but I, I saw the writing on the wall quite some time ago with starting this channel and identifying kind of where people are, especially if I was a beginning investor. Uh, you guys were probably a lot like I was when I was interested in the stock market, um, but, but really was naive in a lot of the decisions that I made. So much of the advice that I give on this channel to provide you guys is, is really just a lot of my decisions that have evolved over 20 years, you know, 25 years in, in stock investing. And I've made it really, really easy to use the templates that I've put out there for you guys to really get your mind wrapped around breaking down these concepts. Because if you just look at it as a wide landscape and you look at it holistically, you're really not going to get it. You really need to look at it uh, individually, all right? You need to look at it pragmatically. You really need to look at these little steps individually. And once you get a step done, then you can move on to the next step. But a lot of people, they look at it and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to start a self-directed account. And, and, and they just, it scares them away and they, they don't wanna take that very first step, all right? But for you guys that have evolved with me since the beginning of the channel, you know, my goal is to empower one investor at a time, all right? And if you are starting that, that course and getting those self-directed accounts started, getting those funds in there, a lot of what will help you is to use my portfolio building strategy that I've built out for you guys. And it is not the end all be all to portfolio building, all right? What I'm finding is a lot of people are looking at what I have offered in way of content and using it as kind of a springboard, right? A, a beginning step of identifying or getting into the mental process of looking at stock or looking at companies in a different way. You know what I mean? They're just looking at companies as potential investments as opposed to just looking at running to Home Depot and grabbing a part that you need, right? Or, or, or going to McDonald's and picking up a, a Happy Meal or whatnot for the kids and not really thinking about that as an investment. Now, when I talk about it not being the end all be all of investments, this is really just meant for you guys to empower yourselves to go in there and look at what I've kind of recommended, all right? So please enjoy guys, this is gonna be my rollout of the, the basic investor tier, all right? A final installment is going to be my aggressive. Um, I'm working on it now, so stand by for that, but I have actually posted this information on my Facebook page, Self-Directed Investing Portfolio Investors. You can go in there and start to kind of use this material if you're interested in, in maybe formula formalizing a, a portfolio for yourself, and you can use the resources, of course, Hit me up with all of your questions. That's totally fine. I'm here to help. But I just thought I would run through um, some of these options because I had a few people hit me up and they're like, where's your top 100 stock picks, Ryan? Where are they? Th there's way more than 100 stock picks in the slides or the tiers that I've built out for you guys, all right? I did the 100 stock pick to prove a point, okay? My point was that there's a lot of great companies out there to invest in and, and you should really look to explore the entire landscape Furthermore, I feel like there's kind of a cream of the crop, a top of the iceberg to where you should really be focusing your efforts if you're a beginning investor. You don't really be, need to be looking you know, at tier two, tier three companies, right? Companies that shouldn't be primary options at the expense of really, really good blue chip stocks out there, guys. So please enjoy. I'm just gonna run through these slides, kind of talk about the format. They're all color coded, very easy to follow. If you don't have, if 
you have questions. Uh, I've actually charged some of the ambassadors in the group to help out anybody that's a new investor, and I've had a few people uh, qualify their questions um, prior to asking it. You do not need to qualify your questions, guys. Just fire it to the group. My group is really, really good, all right? And we're very responsive uh, to anybody with the, with the sheer intent of helping people. That's it, all right? There's, there's no side motive in any of this uh, uh, group dialogue, really, except for the betterment of people. It's just that simple, all right? So I'm gonna kind of run through these a little bit, just kind of show you what we're looking at here for options, kind of the same idea of what I've got for the stock tier one through three, all right? That will be appropriate for a risk tolerance of one through three. I've built these the same way. This is, this is stock tier one, four through six, all right? It's going to cover a risk tolerance for a basic investor four through six, all right? Now, these are examples, all right? These are examples that I felt of really, really good companies that you could actually invest in if you had a basic risk tolerance. Now, a basic risk tolerance, you're gonna be a little less if you're a four and a, and, and a, and a little bit more aggressive if you're a six. So if you were looking at this particular list right here, you know, Facebook and Google carry a lot lesser of a PE and I feel like are a little bit more established, whereas Alibaba's got a little bit higher. So I would put a four or five on Google, Facebook, as opposed to a risk tolerance of six. All fantastic companies. I'm okay with you doing that. If you self-assess that you're a risk tolerance four and you end up tripping and falling into an Alibaba, I'm fine with that, all right? This is really just set for example's sake. And the way these stock tier cards work, work out is this is your particular sector. This is your percentage of recommended allocation. If you wanna be overweight a sector, by all means do it. If you wanna have 25% of your, of your money in technology, that's fine, it's a personal choice. If you feel like 19% is a little bit high and you feel like it's a little too risky and you wanna put more on the table in another sector, then by all means do that, it's totally fine. Um, the 19% really is just a weighted recommendation for you guys or a benchmark to kind of play with a little bit to make sure that you're not overexposed to any one particular sector, all right? So as you can kind of see here, the way these lay out, the consumer staple sector, I've got you know, just a visual example, and this is really aimed at getting a brand new investor. I, I don't know, I'm 40 years old, but if I was 19 and 20, and I was looking at these stock tier cards that I've built for you guys, I mean, I, I could have charged an arm and a leg to look at this stuff, but I'm giving it to you guys through the Facebook free of charge. Um, I, I think down the line, the only payment I'll ask is that you share the information and we can help grow the independent investor channel going forward, but I'm not in a rush, all right? I'm not, I'm not rushing for viewers that don't want to be here, all right? I want to build the channel based on referral, and this stuff is killer content. It's really cool to be able here to look and see, you know, as a basic investor, what are some of my ideas? Diageo is one of my stocks that I featured, right, for, um, uh, for, for February 2018. Mondelez was one of my top 18 picks for 2018. You've got Philip Morris here, which I actually just took a position in Philip Morris, actually. Stuff that I don't have to talk about all the time on YouTube, but just to give you guys an insight of what I'm doing, Colgate, Paul Palmolive, and then the two uh, big pharmacy providers, CVS and Walgreens, and then I've got one of my uh, subscribers that hit me up and was like, geez, good job, Ryan. You talked about Estee Lauder as a potential investment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a few others actually in this particular space that I really like. Ulta Beauty being one of them um, and Estee Lauder being the other. Um, but just to give you guys kind of a, a visual representation, if nothing else for education, you, it doesn't mean that you have to go and buy all these stocks. It just means that I'm providing you that visual reference to kind of get your mind wrapped around what representative stocks would be uh, investment options with any one given uh, sector. Um, and then recommended allocation, again, is notated on every stock tier card that I've provided in the Facebook group, and this one just happens to be 10%. Again, just as a recommended weighting benchmark. That's all it is, guys. Very, very simple. And you guys are gonna find that as you evolve with the channel, you guys are gonna start talking stock language, all right? If you knew nothing about the stock market be before uh, becoming part of the channel and part of the community, guys, you're going to start talking the lingo. It's really not that hard, all right, because I've already kind of broken down the information for you, all right? 
Um, this is your dis uh, consumer discretionary. Um, GM still fell on this list. I actually feel like it's it's still, this is probably the only one on the list that's working through um, some real problems. Starbucks kind of had a disappointing go at it, um, but some of these other stocks here, Dollar General, Tractor Supply, Time Warner, Thompson's Rooter, Yum Brands, and Starbucks, along with GE, just as a, or GM, excuse me, um, as just a, oh, General Motors, not GE, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I kind of screwed that one up a little bit. You guys understand what I'm talking about here, but GM actually in the consumer discretionary um, from a basic uh, per investment perspective here, um, not General Electric. I actually left General Electric off the list for recommended stock tier cards. Um, I'm, I own 150 shares of it. Um, I just got long the stock. It's fine. Um, I'm going to let them work out whatever in the heck they need to work out. How you take a, a $200 billion company and screw it up is beyond me, but I'm going to let them try to figure it out um, if they ever do figure it out. And I'm going to hold long on the shares that I've actually I, I owned. All right. Um, but this is just a representative stock tier card and the consumer discretionary for your guys' perusal. Go on there and click on the uh, album in the Facebook group for um, the basic investor tier, and you're going you're gonna to see this is going to be what you're going to see for your, uh, for your job aids. All right. Um, this stock tier card is representative of three sectors, um, two of which are a little bit lower on the, on the allocation side of the house. I've got energy with Total, um, and uh, Royal Dutch Shell. Now keep in mind, if you're a basic investor, everything from the, the first conservative stock tier program applies. So if you only wanted to pick one recommendation out of the basic, it still means that you're a basic investor and every other asset could be pulled out of the conservative group. That's totally fine too. Mix and match. No portfolios are the same, right? So I built this to be applicable to everybody so portfolios can reflect what it is you want out of the stock market. It's that simple, all right? But you got China Mobile here, you've got Medtronic, you've got Thermo Fisher Scientific, Abbott uh, Laboratories is a buy right now, um, Comcast is a buy right now, and then you've got your two energy names, um, Total, the French energy company, and Royal Dutch Shell, who has a lot of international exposure, doing some great things in Europe right now. Um, but this just kind of breaks it down for you. And then the percentage of exposure, right? How much telecom should I buy? How many shares of a stock should I buy? I get these questions all the time. Buy enough to get whatever exposure to that particular sector. One thing to keep in mind is if you're a basic investor with $1,000 or less to invest, you're not going to be able to cover all the sectors. All right? So kind of keep that in mind. And the last one I've got here for the uh, stock tier four to six is industrials, materials, and financials. So if you're looking for exposure to the financial sector with a basic uh, risk tolerance of four to six, you could come over here and pick out U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank's been on fire. Bank of America's been on fire. I had somebody hit me up. I think it was Kathy who hit me up with uh, my... Um, uh, opinions on Bank of America, I think it's fantastic. And I can speak from a customer perspective. They are my bank and my broker. Um, so I think they're doing some great, great things. And watch out for Zelle. Zelle is going to give Venmo some competition, right? Um, I've actually, I sold out of my position in PayPal um, just for this very reason, because when I sat back and I just I applied a fundamental premise to looking at the reason to invest in PayPal, which is Venmo. I just didn't see that much proprietary nature in the product. That's just that was my opinion. Sold out of it, um, and I've actually used Zelle, um, which is the new um, funds transfer application through Bank of America, and it's fantastic. It's very easy. Um, and then you've got Morgan Stanley, uh, Union Pacific, who's been on a tear, Prax Airs, my top materials pick, UPS and Black & Decker. Guys, I hope you enjoyed tuning in to this rollout of my basic investor stock tier cards. You can kick over to the Facebook page and you can reference these cards um, and, and help you get into and look at a visual representation um, of, of each and every one of these companies from each and every one of the sectors. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If it's your first time tuning into the Independent Investor Channel, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the, of the channel, kick over to the Facebook page if you haven't done so already, 
um, ask for the invite. I'm actually letting anybody into the group right now as we're building it out. Um, and enjoy some of the benefits of some of the content. That is going to be my singular drop point um, for information. I think it's the most expeditious way to get information out to you guys. And that's just what I decided to do, right, wrong, or indifferent. That's what we're doing. Um, if you know anybody out there that's looking to get involved in the stock market, guys, turn, turn them onto the channel, guys. We take basic investors and advanced investors and turn them into self-directed investors. That's just what we do on this channel, guys. Thank you again for tuning in and good luck in your investment future.